since these protests began, a number of provinces have changed some of their health restrictions. Alberta and Saskatchewan have ended vaccine passport. Uh, uh, Manitoba has announced that they're going to be ending theirs. Uh, Quebec did a quick turnaround on their vaccination tax. On Ontario has not, at the time of this recording, made any changes. Do you think that the, the protest is having an impact on these policies, either by sort of pressuring those governments to, to change their policy or maybe um, pressuring Ontario not to make a change in policy for fear of being perceived to capitulate? Well, regardless of whatever the motivations have been for those governments that have uh, loosened restrictions or those, like you suggest, that may want to maintain them because of the protest, I think it speaks to the fact that this is uh, now a, if it wasn't before, a political pandemic, no longer a public health pandemic, because one way or the other, the decision is being made based on uh, partisan gain in politics as opposed to uh, science. We know a lot of the mandates are, to be candidly, completely unjustified. Uh, they don't consider, for example, uh, natural immunity. Some mandates exist in some industries and not others, and there's an irrationality to it. Uh, you know, if a vaccine passport is needed in Ontario, why is it not needed uh, across the border in Manitoba? So a lot of the rules at this point, the patchwork just don't uh, make sense. But I think it, I think it speaks to uh, the poverty of our discourse in terms of that this is no longer about science and all about politics, whether you want to hold on to restrictions if you're that type of government or rescind them in the face of protests. Now, Mark, I want to ask you about some of the fringe elements that these protests have attracted. I, it, it seems like there's a lot of very normal and pleasant people who are participating in, in the protests. But it also, I've seen a lot of reports of some pretty offensive symbols being used at some and, and some reports of, of, of pretty, uh, pretty, pretty unusual individuals with a, a bit of frightening views. Um, is, this, is this just something that protests in general attract, or is there something about the nature of this protest that you think attracts that in particular? Do you have any comment on that fringe aspect? Well, I think to a certain extent, every uh, protest, no matter uh, what sort of protest it is, is always going to have laggards on, uh, people that have alternative motives. Uh, but I think the problem, the specific problem that we have now is one, and it's one that we see in the U.S., but there is, a, uh, there is a misinformation loop that occurs online uh, in certain channels, and it encourages a certain sort of, of right-wing radicalism that I think we're seeing here. It's a problem in the U.S., it's a problem here, and I, I think it's going to have to be something that we deal with going forward. Now, I think it's very important, though, uh, that while we recognize this as a serious problem that we're going to need to face, we have to also separate out the legitimate concerns about mandates, um, about lockdowns, and the policy debates that these things invite. It's normal in a country to have debates about policy, even when it involves a pandemic. It should not be normal uh, to, no to normalize the use of Nazi flags and these sorts of other offensive symbols. I, it doesn't, it, not, not, none of that will help anybody. Ryan, we've got about a minute. I want to give you a chance to comment on that as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, protests will bring individuals from all walks of life, many of whom have never protested before. And I don't think we should characterize uh, the uh, entirety of protesters uh, and condemn them for the sins uh, of some. Individuals ought to be responsible for their individual actions. And I don't think that one or two or a handful of individuals who may have been saying or doing abhorrent or offensive things in the context of these current protests uh, you know, really, they don't, frankly, speak for everyone else. And I don't think politicians ought to be dismissing the convoy and the rallies outright and the legitimate grievances these persons have about restrictions and mandates because of a few bad apples. I don't think that helps to contribute to uh, our political discourse. I don't think it helps shape better public policy and politicians ought to be considerate of that.